heads up. So BAT is one of those tools that I use constantly and it integrates so seamlessly that half the time I forget I'm even using it, uh, which is why it took me until now to make a video about it. Uh, but it can be used for so much more than just the basic functionality of cat. Um, that's the original point of it, just to be a cat clone with syntax highlighting, git integration, uh, formatting, etc, etc. But it does so much more than that. So let me show you some of what it can do. Um, we've got some basic Linux commands, right, that have this monochrome output. It would be really nice to have syntax highlighting here, wouldn't it? Well, we can do that with bat. Let me uh, pipe that into bat, just use the conf language there for configuration. Boom, syntax highlighted. Uh, we can actually get rid of these line numbers too if I just do the dash p flag plain output. And I actually alias this up just in a shell alias to lsbc, boom syntax highlighted commands. And this does not work with only LSBLK, this works with almost any Linux command. I'm gonna say almost, but I say almost any because you can actually set up your own syntax highlighting if you want to. You can define your own syntax highlighting, which basically means if you have some pesky command that you use often that does not have syntax highlighting that bat can manage to make work with it, you can define your own. So let me show you some other commands that just work out of the box though. Um, for example, the free dash H command by default, no syntax highlighting. I set up an alias, uh, put an E on the end, boom, syntax highlighted with bat. Um, another command that you might use, PS, the PS command, uh, by the way, this man page is also syntax highlighted with bat. Um, anyways, snapshot of the current processes, you, you know how it works. Uh, PS AU, let me grep out bat here, by default, no highlighting. I pipe that into bat, bat-l uh, conf, boom, highlighted command. You can probably do this with like 10 or 20 just out of the box. Um, just look through bat list languages and it will show you a bunch of languages you can look through. Um, this CPU info I've found is pretty useful for a bunch of the classic Linux commands, um, but definitely just check through. Uh, like it can highlight your cron tab for you. It can highlight so much. Um, Anyway, so that is just one of the various uses of bat. Let's let's take a step back, talk about how to install it, talk about how to configure it, and then I'll show you a bunch more things you can do with it because this is like genuinely, there is just absolutely so much you can do with bat. All right, so to get it, just get it with uh, your distros package manager. Um, it's just under bat on Arch Linux. Um, Bat-extras, if you want to get a bunch of command line tools like bat integration for man pages, uh, for diff, for rip grep, for a bunch of other things. That is all bundled in bat extras. So if you wanna just get that all in one, you can do that. Or those are literally just shell scripts. They're in this repo. So I will link it if you wanna just get one of these shell scripts and just, you know, install it, stick it wherever you want, whatever. Anyways, so just get bat. The configuration, um, if I list out, uh, I think there's like a config uh, file command to tell you. Yeah, so here's where the config is. Um, I assume it'll be there for most people, but double check if you want to. If I go into the config itself, it is super simple. It's basically just for formatting. Um, the only two options I have set that are not default. So I have the ANSI theme here, which is just going to force it to use system colors. Um, if I print out my system colors here, I have it set with Pywall, which uh, I've made a video about, so won't go into too much detail there, but system colors are set properly and they're derived from the wallpaper. Um, so there we go, that's the theme. Um, I'm also using the style formatting to just have numbers and then get sign changes. So no grid or header. Um, actually, if I show you how it looks like by default, if I do bat style equals full, this is gonna be the, the full style with it. If I do scripts, uh, let me just cut out a script there. There we go. So we've got the size, we've got the file, we've got the grid. Whereas I have it just as style uh, equals plain. Um, that's my basic configuration of it. And I can cat that out again. There we go. Um, it can also do all of the basic cat stuff like concatenating files and you know everything that cat normally does, but I won't bore you with that. So anyways, that's the basic configuration there. As for themes, you can of course define your own themes if you wish. I would say probably just stick with your system colors, assuming you have them set to what you want because that's probably gonna be significantly easier, but you can make a custom theme file if you want. So if I go into bat themes and then uh, I have a Nord edit theme that I was working on a while ago. So yeah, it's gonna be a little bit complex to customize all the themes if you want to, but you can do that. Um, and there's also just a bunch of default themes if you want to. So list themes, um, there's, obviously a ton of different themes. I'm sure you can find something you like or just use your system colors. Okay, so that is setting up that. 
let's talk about other stuff it can do. So man pages, I already mentioned that. Um, this is just using the basic man pages shell script that's actually over here in this bat-extras repo. Um, you can either use the batman command if you go ahead and install this whole package, or you can just set it up as an alias for man, set it up, it's literally just a shell script. So just set it up to work however you would like. Um, and also bat automatically pages. So you don't have to worry about like piping it into less or anything like that. Um, if I have, you know, some, some large file here, it will just automatically page. Another thing you can do with bat is FCF. So if I go into my scripts directory and just run FCF, Normal fuzzy finder, I've made a video about it. Um, this is bat doing the paging, or not the paging, the syntax highlighting on the side here. It is gonna go ahead, syntax highlight everything for me. I can go through with FCF. Um, I could, you know, open that if I want to, whatever. Um, that is basic syntax highlighting for FCF. You can set that up just in your uh, shell uh, profile if you wish. Um, it's just in FCF default ops and I have it set up at the end here. So bat uh, previewing, um, just basic options for it. You can, you know, adjust the options if you want a slightly different preview, whatever, but just put that at the end there. Um, of course, the page for bat here on GitHub tells you how to do all this stuff too. So I'm just kind of running through it really quickly. If you want to learn more in depth how to do any of this, just read through the page. It explains it pretty well. Anyway, so that's a ton of the syntax highlighting you can do. Um, something else you can do, help menus on various commands. If I just, you know, help on a command, boom, this is syntax highlighting done with bat. Whereas if I didn't have this uh, done with bat, it would just be, you know, basic all one color, much harder to navigate. So this really is syntax highlighting for basically everything. Um, you can also integrate it into shell scripts. I have a shell script that I use, uh, system stats, boom, piped it into bat. Now we've got syntax highlighting on it. Um, it's just like, I can just think of so many examples here that's like, if you've ever wanted syntax highlighting on like basically anything, bat can do it for you. One thing to note, how much time does it take to pipe something into bat? Because that's something actually worth considering, especially if performance really matters to you on your system. So let's um, let's do like some basic, I don't know, let's just use user bin cat, so native core utils cat there on scripts, um, or I'm already in the script directory. There we go, random script, cat it out. Um, okay, let's do time on that. So zero seconds, 72% CPU. Okay, so very fast, right? Um, let's time this again, but use bat on screenshot there, same script. Um, we are, oh, that's cause it's, it's gonna page, let me. All right, we've got the, we've got the time there. All right, so that's our time comparison and you can see, okay, it is actually definitely a little bit longer. All right, so what is the takeaway here from this? Um, I think that if you are on your own personal system where performance isn't that big of a deal to you, just use it on everything if you want syntax highlighting. Like if you want syntax highlighting on like your LSBLK command, why not? It's not like I'm losing that much by, you know, it costing me two milliseconds here to have syntax highlighting because this is my own personal system. It, it doesn't really matter. As much as I do try to keep things minimal, I do try to limit the number of programs I install just because I don't want to have a million programs. If I had, you know, a ton of programs that I didn't use, then yes, that would start to eat up, you know, resources. But the bottom line is this isn't a server. If you're on some server or any machine where you really, really care about performance, yeah, don't slap bad on everything. But if you want syntax highlighting, you know what, here's the main argument. The main argument is for the two milliseconds longer that it takes, my brain can process this output faster. I can literally read through this faster than I could read through just the pure LSBLK command. So that's my argument for that. Anyways, um, I hope you learned something. Have fun with syntax highlighting. I will see you next time. Peace.